there's a complaint about um, India's youth in general that they are very good at announcing problems, at pointing out problems. And I won't take names, but some of India's so-called future, some certain activists who think India should be run differently are very good at pointing out problems. And when asked for solutions, they say, yeah, but there are more problems. As somebody who's been asked this by different people from different walks of life, do you think there's a systemic problem with us and accepting solutions because they're harsh? And to extend that point, I have a genuine concern with a lot of people that I see around me and I think as Indians we need to ask ourselves why this happens. That in India you go to anybody who's just freshly made a mistake. It can be a small mistake, he could have stolen 10 rupees or it could be a large mistake, he could have killed someone. The moment you go and hold his collar and ask him why he did it, he says, you have not been in my shoes. You have not gone through my circumstances. For some reason that justifies doing a wrong thing. But if somebody comes and points fingers at problems, they all join, we all join together and say, ha, wo chor hai. When the truth is we don't actually stop and look within ourselves. Is this a systemic problem with this country? Because we were discussing earlier about even unhappy countries like China being better off than us when it comes to individual morality and individual responsibility. So where does we, India stand in terms of the systemic problem of as long as I do it, it's okay. As long as somebody else does it, it's a crime. Where does that start? Where does that stop? See about people making a profession of pointing out problems. This is becoming a serious problem, okay. You try to do anything in this country, they want to stop it. You want to build a dam, there's a protest. You want a nuclear project, there's a protest. Thermal project, protest. Windmill, protest. But everybody wants everything. In their homes, they want all the gadgets, they want twenty-four hours power, they want everything going. This is because we are only looking at the problems and we have not taken up the challenge of creating solutions in our minds. I think this is a kind of a, a pre-independence hangover because Mahatma Gandhi brilliantly designed a, a revolt against the British not by killing them, not by shooting at them, not by bombing installations, but simply by stopping activity. Band, Hartal, Satyagraha came from there. It was a brilliant device for those days because we were conquered. But even today, if you want to become a leader, I'm just telling you this is a secret, okay? Suppose you want to become a political leader, don't try to do… don't try to build a road, build a dam, do this, do that, no. Gather one hundred of your fans and block a highway. Make our lives miserable, you will become a leader. Yes, unfortunately yes. You stop the train, you stop the road, you stop the cut the water, cut the electricity, you will become a leader. If you make something happen, you will get ignored of course. Making the nation go and making the nation stop are two different kinds of technologies. Mahatma Gandhi mastered the art of making the nation stop and it was contextually the right thing to do for those times because we were being ruled by somebody else. But we are still doing the same thing. State governments are demanding that they must have a right to call for a band. Band means closure. <laughs> I cannot understand how an administration can call for a band. <laughs> but they are actually saying it's their right to call for a band. Close down something and you will rise in your prominence. This must change. We should never identify people who stop something in this country as leaders. This must be done by all the citizens. Whoever stops something in this nation should never ever be our leader. Whoever makes things happen in this country, he must be the leader, isn't it?